All right, now, this part is gonna be really fun. This might end up being its own separate video, but we'll see. Now, the guitar is gonna be completely black. Now I have a feeling that the, or in my opinion at least, and I've you know asked the client before going ahead with any of these plans, but I feel like the rosewood fretboard just won't mesh well enough. So what we're gonna do is we are going to ebonize it. Now what I mean by that is literally darkening it with the help of stains. Oh, I hate that sound. Now, if I could just find black. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up the fretboard. Um, ideally, what I would love to have right now is some lighter fluid, because that would dry up the fretboard, get rid of all the residual oils and everything else that are on there, because right now I don't know what's on there. And um, if I get the fretboard dry enough, the stain itself will seep in a little bit better. So basically, what I am doing is cleaning the fretboard at first, and then we're going to have a look at how it looks. It's actually drying up pretty nice. Okay, cool. So yeah, I would recommend at first using uh, maybe lighter fluid for this. I don't like using it, mainly for the sake of the fact that yes, it dries up fretboards and it's a nasty, nasty stuff and you don't really wanna be touching it and the fretboard is kind of something you touch. So I don't really approve of the lighter fluid method. It's just something that I've noticed to be useful in the past. But honestly, I have a feeling that this uh, Diodario spray cleaner is actually doing the trick very nicely. All right, I am going to let that dry for just a second while I get myself some gloves. Now, at this point as well, um, you wanna make sure that your fretboard is exactly the way you want, so you have a little bit of, if you want to have a little bit of an edge or a rounded edge to it, you wanna do that now because afterwards, you don't wanna break the stain off. I am going to be using the Crimson Guitars Spirit Stain. That's just a place for me to plonk it down. Crimson Guitars Spirit Stain, Black Spirit Stain. Oh, this has the cleaning product on it. Because it will be a little bit well, I feel like the pigment will seep in a little bit better than on the water version. And this is gonna take a couple of layers to do, but essentially I'm just applying it. I don't have to worry about getting it on the neck itself because the neck is getting painted black if I feel the need to, I can come back and clean that off ever so slightly. But as it currently stands, I don't think I will need to. All right, so I'm gonna do the first layer like this, and we're gonna kinda come back after it's dried up and do the next layer, and I'm gonna move the camera in a bit closer so you can see it too. Now, you might be thinking about the frets and the inlays, but don't worry. Those will get cleaned up very easily because stain doesn't really, you know, stain doesn't really apply all that well to pearl and metal 
And if you're using spirit or mineral based stains or anything, finishing products that are mineral based and stuff like that, make sure that you're working in a very well ventilated area. So a window, crack open a window. You don't necessarily want to breathe this stuff in, in a confined space. Now already from the initial coat, we're starting to see a pretty nice difference. Now bear in mind that this is now a pretty dry fretboard. When we come back to do setup and polishing up frets and stuff like that, we're gonna be oiling up the fretboard so this color should come in even better at that stage. I'm gonna move the camera in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So we're already getting a pretty nice dark color, but I'm gonna go and do a second layer to accentuate that even more. Right now it's nice, but I want it darker. Side of the fretboard too. And it's a very small little added feature of refinishing this guitar. But I guarantee you, it makes a hell of a difference. And one thing you want to be very wary of is not leaving any streaks. You want to kind of make sure that everything looks uniform. A little bit more to the side. A little bit more to this side. And I'm going to do one final somewhat dry pass. So I'm not adding that much stain on this. I'm just going to be kind of couple of swipes, really let that sink in. And you could use a little bit of rubbing alcohol and uh, a Q-tip to clean up the dots or scrape the dots clean with scalpel very carefully so you don't scratch anything. But um, yeah, I really like how this is looking. So that's just a few very small layers or rather thin layers of spirit based stain. And we already have a fretboard that looks a lot, a lot better, at least in my opinion. Now to let it dry and come back to do the rest. And what I mean by the rest is literally just cleaning up the dots and then looking at the finished product. All right, moving onwards. All right, now this next part is gonna be extremely easy. So I'm just gonna have a really, really sharp scalpel. I'm just gonna very lightly scrape away the stain on the dots. While I could easily leave the dots as they are, cleaning them up to their full pearliness ensures some much needed contrast. Now, <laughs> using words like much needed contrast when I've just basically made sure to get rid of contrast, there's a difference between having contrast and having contrast that work. While the rosewood itself would probably look okay in the grand scheme of things, in comparison to the fully black guitar, I just feel like a darker fretboard 
goes that extra mile and kind of looks a little bit more expensive in a way. It looks a bit higher end. You will see what I mean when this guitar is completely finished and I can do a sort of side by side comparison between where we started and what we ended up with. And yeah, you could do this with Q-tips and rubbing alcohol just fine. But I find this a little bit, a little therapeutic for me. So I don't mind doing it. it. Takes a little bit longer, but it's nice. Nice to do. There. Now, if we're gonna compare these two dots next to one another, which one do you think looks better? See what I mean? All right, I'm gonna do the rest and yeah, I'll show you the finished product afterwards. All right, so this is what we're looking at. So right now I have made the fretboard darker. I've cleaned up the dots. I've cleaned up the side dots. And in my opinion, at least, it looks pretty cool. This cleaned up very nicely. And I think it will fit the black, 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 black guitar so much better than the very light colored rules with that it had. All right, awesome. Uh, next step really is for me to oil the fretboard. So let's get a closer look at that. I'll bring in some more light. Move the camera. All right, so this is where we're really gonna see the difference the ebonizing did for the fretboard. Bring out some of that darkness in it. So I'm gonna be using some, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the last of my fretboard restorative from Crimson because I'm running out. A small little bottle like this has lasted me a very long time. But yeah. Apply on the plenty. Let's see. Well, I have a little bit of the stain coming off, but not an excessive amount, which is nice, which is really good. And as you can probably tell already, that the fretboard is a good bit darker than when we started off. It's a very slight difference, but a difference nonetheless, and it makes for a completely different looking instrument in the end. Had this been the very light shade of, of uh, rosewood that it was, it would have looked a little bit out of place on such a dark colored guitar. I mean, the entire guitar is black. You have something that light colored on a completely black instrument, and it does show quite a lot. You can see it here if we compare. So this is what the fretboard was colored like before. And this is now with the uh, stain on it and the ebonizing. All right, so I'm gonna let that oil soak in just a little bit and then we're gonna go back and buff out the excess. Um, I still have some. This is small little bit will last me still a little while. I think it's gonna be good for probably the base neck that I'm working on or the base fretboard replacement that I'm working on. But this is how much stain came off. And that's not a lot at all. I am gonna wipe that down with a lint-free cloth though because this isn't giving me the results I want. The paper is kind of disintegrating on the surface, so I'm gonna use a little bit of an old t-shirt to buff this out. There we go. That looks nice. Now it's just a matter of 
slapping on all the hardware and attaching it to the body, stringing it up and uh, having a look at the final, final result of all this hard work. Well, I say hard work, but what I mean is such a simple process. So let's have a look at how big a difference it made. All right, now that I got everything put back together, this is what the fretboard looks like on this guitar now. And uh, yeah, seriously, looking at this, if it would have had the lighter colored rosewood on it, it wouldn't look the same. This kind of pulls everything together. Already it looks a bit more of an expensive instrument. I mean, just a small detail like that makes it appear to be like a little bit more higher end. And uh, it makes a hell of a difference. It's the little things. But hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe, hit like, comment down below, smash that bell because it does help out a hell of a lot. And um, yeah, let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys next week for another video. Tom Stroud.